What's up everybody? Welcome to the Stocks Channel. My name is Corey and today in the stock market we see a continuation of the bullish rally and it's starting to look more and more like we're going right back into another bull market. First up, let's take a look at the S&P 500 SPY ETF. So let's crack open this chart and see what's going on in the stock market today. All right, all right. So today on SPY, we were up 0.68%. And we see SPY did break and close back over that resistance level at 450. So with this bullish breakout back above resistance, I don't think you can any longer call this a dead cat bounce because if this is a dead cat, it's starting to climb the curtains. Now, normally when you get a bullish breakout, you do want to see confirmation. So one more day closing back above SPY 450 will be looking very bullish. Now you can see we're also back above the 200 simple moving average for the second day in a row. So the next critical test is going to be this 20 simple moving average and the 50 EMA. So you're looking for resistance levels at 454 and right around 457. If at any point SPY starts breaking back above 457, you can no longer assume that we're going lower in the bear scenario because this is going to violate the scenario that a lot of bears were saying that you're going down in a fifth leg lower. So that fifth leg lower is looking a lot less likely so don't rule out the possibility that we are going right back into another bull market. Now I talk about this concept many times and I'm going to bring it up again. If you are panic selling down here, please do not FOMO in up here. This is exactly what gets traders into trouble because they're just trading off an emotion. When you see the stock market selling off in a straight line, you think there's no end to the selling so you panic sell. And then when you see the stock market going up in a straight line, you think it's going to go up forever, so you start panic buying. And then when the stock market pulls back, you're absolutely getting whipsawed, and you're going to get very worn out trading like this. So make sure you have a very strict plan and you're not getting whipsawed, because yes, even though it does look like we are going back into another bull market, we are still going to need a pullback before we can continue to go much higher. That doesn't mean we can't go higher in the short term, but eventually we are going to run into a very strong resistance area, we're going to see profit taking and possibly even some bears stepping into short and we are going to get another buying opportunity. So I suggest if you are buying down here and taking on a lot of risk, go ahead and don't be afraid to lock in a few of those profits because there's still the possibility you're going to be able to buy a dip. So support levels on SPY will be 450, 443, and 440. And below 440, it will be a deeper bear trap, which means we could go anywhere between about 435 to 436 and eventually we should find a higher low and then go back into another bull market. Remember your line in the sand is going to be right around 428 on SPY because if we break below that level, we're more than likely not going back into another bull market and this was all just a giant bull trap. I think that's very unlikely at this point in the game and you also have to look at the volume down here and there has been a lot of buying volume. If you look at the volume, there's a lot of buying volume that offsets the majority of the selling volume because you're seeing a lot of very large green buying volume candles down here and not as many red. So there is clearly a lot of very big money and very smart money who knew the stock market was not going into a bear market this year and they just use all of that fear mongering to scare you out of your position so they could gladly take those shares off of your hands. So don't get duped by this market and make sure that if you're not in the market, you are not just chasing it now if you were not buying down here. You need to have discipline in this game and this is going to be a very rough year and there is going to be plenty of volatility going in through the rest of the summer. So buckle up and enjoy the ride and make sure you have a strict plan and you're following it very closely. The very bullish breakout on SPY will be back above about 459 to 460. And then we will have confirmation that we are more than likely going to see a brand new all time high this year and it'll be right around the corner. Remember, this is still a downtrend until it's not, but things in the short term are looking very bullish. But we have to remember that the overall medium term trend is still lower and the overall macro trend is still higher. So in the short term, we're bullish. In the medium term, we still have to be cautious. And in the long term, we are still on a macro level bull market. That's a lot to swallow. So if you're not following along, I suggest looking at my Sunday videos where I talk about macro technical analysis and we look at weekly and monthly charts only. Jumping over to the NASDAQ 100 triple Qs, you can see that we also had a bullish day today going up 0.68% and finding resistance right at that 200 simple moving average right at 366. The bullish breakout levels will be back above 367 and then back above 369. And as soon as we see the triple Qs back above 369, you need to take the bearish scenario and throw it out the window. So it's looking more and more bullish and this is definitely starting to look like a very impulsive bull rally here, but that doesn't mean that we can't get a pullback. So from this resistance, anywhere between about 367 to 369, we could see a pullback. If we go straight through that resistance, we could go all the way up to 377 before we see that pullback and that's going to be right around the 50 EMA. 
So look for resistance to the upside at 366, 369, and 377 with downside support at 360 and then 352. If we get below 352, this could have been a bull trap. So you're looking for strong support at 340 to tell us that we're going lower, but I don't expect to break down to a lower low. So I do think we are going to form a higher low somewhere before we see that next bullish impulse. And yes, it will be a face ripper. In the Dow Jones, we were up 0.81% today and I continue to tell you to not ignore this indicator. The Dow Jones has two gaps to fill at 356 and 360, and there's no way we are going into a bear market without filling those gaps. So I gave you two indicators to pay attention to, and they were the Dow Jones and Apple stock, and hopefully you listened to what I told you because they did help you understand where the market was likely going over these next few days. Now on the Dow Jones, we're already back to the 50 EMA, which is going to be strong resistance, which is right around 354. But if we can break above that, you're looking for the gap close and resistance breakout level at 356. Above 356, we're looking very bullish and we should close that gap at 360. And above 360, we're going to be looking for all time highs, even though we will likely get a pullback before we run straight to an all time high. So look for those critical resistance levels for the breakout. And to the downside, you're looking for support at 350 and 347. And if we break below 347, look for strong support right around 344. Below 344, it's looking like a bull trap and you're looking for support at 340 and 338. On the Russell 2000, we were up just over 1% today and we did get a bullish breakout back above that level right around 203. From here, we still have a lot of work to do to reverse the bear market and to reverse the strong bear trend. So we will need to see price action breaking back above 212 and then closing back above 219. Above 219, it'll look like the bear market is over and we could go back into another bull market. However, this is still a very strong downtrend and there's still tons of resistance on the way to the bullish breakout. So to the downside, continue to watch those support levels at 197, 196, and 191. And if at any point we break below 191, we will start trending down towards 170 with support on the way there at 183. On the ARK ETF, we were up 2.19% today and it's looking more and more likely that we could have seen the bottom in ARK right around $65. It's still a bear market and it's still a downtrend, so don't rule out the possibility that we could still be trying to get to 60. However, we did see lots of buying volume and we're starting to get an impulsive bounce off of this low and we did get a bullish breakout back above about 75. The next bullish breakout will be back above 85 and then back above 85, we have bullish confirmation on a close above 91 and then the next close will be on a close back above 99. So to the downside, you now have support at 73, the breakout level at 71 and that strong support level at 65. And please remember that it is a very strong downtrend so if you're taking long trades, you need great risk management and you need to understand it's still possible we could be going down to 60. On the VIX, we were down over 11.5% today and we see the VIX absolutely getting destroyed, closing down below 24 and back below the 50 EMA. And this is a bullish breakthrough. Remember I told you next time the VIX closes below 24, that will be a bullish breakdown. And then confirmation we're going back into a bull market is when you see the VIX back below 20. So this doesn't mean the bulls are out of the woods and there's no more volatility because we could still see a spike off of this low, but this is definitely a very early warning sign that we're going back into a bull market and it's not something that I would just ignore. On Bitcoin, we're currently up around a half a percent. We see Bitcoin right at resistance at 39,000 and we still do have a bear market and a very strong downtrend. So if we cannot close back above 39,000, we should come back down to retest the low right around 35,000. Below 35,000, look for a retest of 30,000 and if we break down below 30,000, you're looking for Bitcoin to start trending down towards 20,000. On a bullish breakout back above 41,000, you can start getting more bullish, but the confirmation won't be until we get back above 46,000. So respect the downtrend, and if you're buying at these levels, remember that you are buying in a downtrend, and you are buying something that's in a very strong bear market. On Nvidia stock, we were up 0.62% today, and we see Nvidia is trying to break out at that level right around 251. On a breakout back above 251, we'll be looking a lot more bullish, which means we could come up here to test resistance right around 267 to 271, and the next bullish breakout will be back above 277. Remember, Nvidia is coming out of a very strong bear market, but we are seeing strong support at that 200 simple moving average, and that bounce off of 209, which means we might have already seen the bottom, and Nvidia stock is trying to go back into another bull market. In the event we start coming lower, look for support at 236 and the gap close at 228 and the 200 simple moving average at 223. On Tesla stock, we were down 0.58% today and we see Tesla is struggling to close above that resistance level right around 940 and the next bullish breakout level will be back above about 955. Above 955, you're looking for a retest of resistance at 1000 
and when Tesla gets back above 1000, it will be looking very bullish and we could see another bull market. However, we have to respect the fact that we're in a downtrend in the short term, so watch support at 900 and the gap close at 858. And below that, we have strong support at 842 and the 200 simple moving average at 815. If at any point you see Tesla closing below 815, it could be going into a bear market, which means it could be going much lower. So watch that as a very critical support level. On Apple stock, we were pretty flat on the day, only going down 0.1% today. And Apple stock is still looking incredibly bullish and we're very close to having the full bull trend. The price action's back above all the moving averages and we'll have the full bull trend as soon as the 13 EMA can cross back above the 20 simple moving average. So you have very strong support on Apple stock right around 170 to 168. And if you can get the opportunity to buy the dip off of those levels, that might be the lowest we see Apple go until we see the next all time high. Remember, Apple moves the market, so don't ignore the fact that Apple is looking incredibly bullish. I told you this on Friday that Apple was invalidating a lot of the bearish scenarios, and I was using that as my leading indicator to get bullish in a downtrend. The rest is history, and here we are with Apple breaking out, and the stock market is actually starting to look relatively bullish. So don't ignore these big market moving stocks like Apple, especially when they're looking bullish and they're invalidating some of the bearish scenarios. If at any point Apple starts closing back down below 167, get a lot more cautious because it could be coming back down to about 162. However, to the upside, you're looking for resistance breakouts above 176 and then back above 182 to tell us that we are going to a new all-time high with my price target up here at 188. On the financial sector, we were up 1.38% today and we see the financial sector is looking very strong, bouncing off that 200 simple moving average and it's likely trying to go up there to close that gap at 41. The industrials were up 1.38% today, bouncing and getting back above the support trend line and likely trying to attempt to break out above the 200 simple moving average in the very near future. The healthcare sector was up 0.27% today, back above the 200 simple moving average for the third day in a row, and we still do have a gap way up there at 141. The energy sector was up 3.56% today, and we did get another bullish breakout back above this price target here at 66.5, so we can clearly still see we have very bullish price action and a very bullish trend, but don't forget we could be reaching a top in the very near future, and we still do have gaps below to fill. So jumping back over to S&P 500, you can very clearly see that this is starting to look like a very bullish impulse, which means that it could be a buy the dip market in the very near future. Don't chase something you miss. So if you miss this rally, wait for a pullback. And if you're jumping in, make sure you have great risk management because we could be getting very close to a critical resistance and we will need to cool down. I think it's becoming more and more obvious that the bearish scenarios can be thrown out the window. So try not to be overly bearish, even though we are in a downtrend in the medium term, we are looking very bullish in the long term and very bullish in the short term. So eventually we should see the bullish breakouts and get confirmation that we're back on the bull and we're going right back into another bull cycle. Also, don't forget that I do have Bank Trade Alerts, which is an algorithm driven trade alert service that only trades the ETF TQQ and sends all of your buy and sell alerts directly via email and text message. Bank Trade Alerts makes money whether it's a bull market or a bear market. And even a year like 2008 when everybody was losing money, Bank Trade Alerts made over 90% and beat the market that year. If you're interested in learning more about Bank Trade Alerts or how to subscribe, you can find out all of the information by clicking on the link in the description of the video. I also have the Stocks Channel Discord where I do intraday updates and analysis to help you navigate this volatile market and stay on the right side of the trade. And I bring new trade ideas to you weekly. If you're interested in joining the Stocks Channel Trading Discord community, you can find out how to join the Discord server by clicking on the link below. So thanks for watching everybody. I hope you're crushing this market. And as always, I will see you in the next episode.